All right, so Black Brother. Let's listen. Right in. middle in the audience. Justin. Hello. In our audience. Hello, Madam Vice President. Uh, you live in Michigan. Yes, ma'am. Don't love saying hello, Madam Vice President. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> what's, your, what's your question? It's an immigration question. question for you is uh, um, when you become president, what would be your uh, specific your steps? Help? Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> what would be specific steps to strengthening the border? So it's a wonderful and important question. Um, I, you know my background was as a prosecutor and I was also the elected attorney general for two terms of a border state. So this is not a theoretical um, It sounds very theoretical. Let's this go back to the question. Hold on, hold on. Can we go back to the question? A specific yeah. step. Because is, uh, I already lost the question. Um, when you become president, what would be your uh, specific yeah. steps? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> what would be specific steps to strengthening the border? So it's a wonderful and important question. Um, I, you know my background, was as a prosecutor and I was also the elected. We don't know your background. We know you were a prosecutor, but we do not know your background. But instead of focusing on your background, why don't you just tell us what you've done the last three and a half years when you were borders are? The attorney general for two terms of a border state. So this is not a theoretical um, issue it's for me. This is something I've actually worked on. Okay. I have prosecuted okay. transnational criminal organizations for the trafficking of guns, drugs, and human beings. So what is your plan for the border? You said that you've prosecuted people for guns. Okay. I take very seriously the importance of having a secure border and ensuring the safety of the American people. She takes very seriously having a secure border and ensuring the safety of the American people. Do y'all feel that that's the case based on what's happening right now? And this is, yo, this is what, this is why she's so amazing. Hold on, let me unplug it. I'm, I try not to keep my charger in the computer when it's, I don't, don't overcharge your stuff. But this is what I'm so impressed by with Kamala. She actually has successfully, I don't know if I'm impressed with her or more just disappointed in us. She has, she, if it's beneficial for her to act like, like, let me, if it's beneficial for her to attach herself to a policy that has been successful in the Biden-Harris administration, she will do so. But then in other cases where she doesn't feel like answering a question or doesn't want to be held accountable to the last three and a half years, she will just completely act as if she's not in office. She will almost act as if Trump is in office right now. And hey, we need we need a we need something different. She is the vice president right now. To a president that is, I, I, I think I'm being nice when I say is not functioning totally well. Is, is that being nice? I, I think so. Uh, sadly, where we are now can be traced most recently back to the fact that when the United States Congress, members of the Congress, including some of the most conservative Republicans, mm -hmm. came up with a border security bill. And here's what that border security bill would have done. It would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border. And let me tell you, those border agents are working around the clock. It would have just been about giving them some support and relief, which is probably why the border agents actually endorsed the bill. That doesn't make your point. If anything, that takes away from it. Yeah, we know people just get tired at work and just want relief, but that doesn't mean that that's necessarily the best thing. And this is the whole blame game. We're talking about a leader. We have, like, think about this. Think about this. This would not be okay in any other situation. Sports, on the job, this blame game that she plays that we just embrace. This would not be okay in any other aspect. She's asked a question. She blames Trump, who's not in office, for having enough power to shut down something when he's not even in office. And she's the vice president right now to a president, Joe Biden, regarding a situation that, she, that he told her to take care of with the border. But she blames Trump's, like, the blame game and, and then say that she's a leader? No, leaders don't do that. You figure out a way or you don't place blame. Is that just the understanding? 
Could you imagine working for a company? Let's go back to that same example. You're working for a company where your salary is dependent on that company doing well. And you go to the leader of that company and say, well, you know, you know, this guy that doesn't work in the company, like it wasn't our fault in the company. We tried to do the right things for y'all. But this other guy that's not in the company, like he just has more power than us. He had the power. to. Inf- so why am I not talking to that guy? Why am I not working out a deal with that guy? Why am I talking to you then? Does this make sense or am I tripping? I may be tripping. I may be tripping. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl. And I'm looking at people from all over the country here. So I don't need to tell the folks who are. And we've already, what's so funny is, do we need to bring back that video? Do we need to bring back that video very quickly? So she's talking about border stuff, and this is why I got to do it. This is why I got to do it. Hold on. We got to pull up this video again. We got to bring back that video because she's talking, she's blaming, she's blaming. Okay, so matter of fact, we have a, this is the video that we didn't show on Friday. I want y'all to, I want y'all to see this very quickly. I want y'all to, matter of fact, we're going to play the one that we already saw because it's a shorter one. Let me share the screen here. She's blaming stuff on Trump, right? All right, we're back. Not sure what happened, but it is what it is. It is what it is. We're not going to waste any time talking about it. All right, so I want to show y'all this real quick. As we're talking, so she's talking about the border. She's talking about the border. Hopefully y'all can still hear me. Hopefully y'all can still see. Uh, Let me just actually, let me log in so I can check. All right, so we're still good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Ah, see, whenever that happens, I lose some of the people watching, but it is what it is. All right. So I have to reference this video because she's playing all this blame game. Just listen to what this any information on this increase in SIAs or mention any of the arrests. These are aliens with significant in San Diego. We had an exponential. So this is Aaron Heike, and we played this video last show. He's the former chief patrol agent of U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Increase in significant interest aliens. These are aliens with significant ties to terrorism. Prior to this administration, the San Diego sector averaged 10 to 15 SIA arrests per year. Once word was out, the border was far easier to cross. San Diego went to over 100 SIAs in 2022. Well over that in 2023, and even more than that registered this year. These are only the ones we caught. At the time, I was told I could not release any information on this increase in SIAs or mention any of the arrests. The administration was trying to convince the public there was no threat at the border. Can we just leave it there? He was told to not report certain information. And and this this entire video talks about this, but I don't want to take too much time on this video. But isn't it so funny how Kamala Harris can blame Trump for a problem that happened during her time there because her party was inviting people and incentivizing people to come here illegally? So she creates the problem with Joe Biden. She creates the problem, then blames Trump for not being able to fix the problem that she caused. Do we like is that not insane? But we but we're sitting here saying that she's a good leader and she's the most qualified candidate to be president. This is really what we're standing on. Somebody who created the problem. We did not have this problem when Trump was in office. So she we can't say that Trump created it. You created it, and now you're not taking the responsibility that comes along with solving it. You're just playing the blame game. Let's keep going to listen to to Kamala. Let's keep going. We're watching this. What fentanyl has done to families, to, to kids in our country, and the need to take seriously stemming the flow coming into our country and addressing that. And what's so funny, Cuzzo? So Keith, you can see on the screen, he wrote, still waiting on specifics. So he wrote that. I know we went out for a bit, um, but he wrote that. When did you write that? You wrote that at 926. It's 935. We weren't out that long enough. We're long ago. We're still waiting on specifics. She hasn't given any specifics. That extraordinary and, and tragic issue in terms of its effect. The bill would have allowed us to have more resources to prosecute transnational criminal organizations. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. And it would have been part of the solution. And Donald. Yo, when I was in high school, man, I could have been one of the goats, man, but my coach was hating on me or they had this other dude come in and did it. Like, you sound crazy. Trump. 
called up those folks and said, don't put that bill on the floor for a vote. He blocked. She's using this as a, an empowering moment. But what it really should do is this should show us how little power she has. Trump's not in office and you're telling me he has the power. So if you become president, what makes you think that he doesn't have the power to do the same thing? So pretty much if you can blame Trump for not being able to fix a problem that you created, you're saying that he has enough power for that. But then once you get in office, who's to say that he doesn't use the same amount of power? Y'all say he want to be a dictator. Y'all say all these other things. So who's to say that he won't leverage his power that way? The building, you know why? Because he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. He'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. Ma'am, you created the problem. You're talking about somebody just running on creating a problem. Look at all the problems that we have in the world right now. We didn't have these problems when Trump was in office. But you're talking about he'd rather run on a problem. Knock it off. That thing that she's talking about, like all of these policies that they try to say, we put together a bill that would have um, addressed border security. Yeah, but in those bills, just like and we've looked through a few of them, what do they do? They always put a whole bunch of other stuff in the actual bill. It's not just what they're proposing or just what they're announcing to the public. But when you look at it, it's like, yo, what does that have to do with anything? Like an example was her era, the Inflation Reduction Act. What does Inflation Reduction Act have to do with hiring a bunch of people in the IRS to go after people to garnish payments from them that they're, that they're supposedly they, they didn't they didn't um, pay as many taxes that they thought as much in taxes as they should have? But what does that have to do with inflation? I'm just giving you an example of how these policies and these agendas are pushed forward. And they'll say like, hey, we proposed this bill. And it was supposed to do one thing, but it has to do with something totally different than what the actual bill sounds like when you hear it by its name. Let's keep going. And he has so did she answer the question yet? Put his political, personal political security before border security. Because understand, even in the intervening months, what that bill would have done to give support. He's put, did, did she just say what I think he's, hold on. Political security. Put his political, personal political security before border security. Yes. Is she talking about Trump or personal security? Like, the same guy that's been to assassination attempts. And maybe I heard that wrong. Because understand, even in the intervening months, what that bill would have done to give support. And he got to shake his head. Care about no, damn well she ain't and this again gets to the point about what does leadership really look like? And is it about you or is it about the people? Right. Is it about running on problems or fixing problems? My work and my career has always been about saying, let's fix problems. Let's so, address the needs because we know here it's it comes. Here it comes. To do that. So to answer Justin's question, <laughs> after five minutes of speaking, Oprah finally chimes in and says, "Well, to answer Justin's question, which is a nice way of saying, well, you still haven't answered the question. This is this is crazy. This is crazy because we know it's within our capacity to do that. So to answer Justin's question." Now that that bill has gone and hasn't passed, will you reintroduce that? Absolutely. And when I am elected president of the United States, I will make sure that bill gets to my desk and I will sign it into law. And this is what Donald Trump was talking about in the debate. Why can't you do that right now? Are you saying that Joe Biden does not want to do it? So Joe Biden doesn't agree with the bill either? Because you're saying that you'll make sure that it gets to your desk. What? You, you, you're there now. You're there now. Like, I can't be the only one that's thinking this. You're there now. So either you're saying that Joe Biden is there now and has the power to get it to his desk and decided not to, or you're just giving us lip service and acting as if you'll have more power than you actually have if you are president. Does that make any sense? Let's move on. Let's move on. 3728. That's our next timestamp. What are we talking about? Let's see. Oh, this is an interesting one. Ew, ew, it's Dak. Just want to thank you for checking out our video and visiting the OG Network. If you enjoyed the video, please make sure that you give us a like. 
And if you're looking to join a community of inspired individuals striving for purposeful abundance, subscribe. And if you're feeling real generous, share the video with some friends and family. All right, I'll see y'all soon. Eat.